My name is Dr. Temi Odomosu. I'm an art historian and a curator, and I'm currently saying hello from a Thursday evening in Malmö in Sweden. I spent uh, many years working in museum collections and archives as a researcher, but also collaborating with artists who are interested in recovering uh, unfinished histories, particularly those of colonialism and slavery. So I think some of the benefits to Open Glam are really the opportunity to explore and uh, find things. You know, the, the, the first um, work of a researcher is really to understand, like, where am I? What is here? And I think the benefits of Open Glam are that instead of having to go into institutions one by one, and often with lots of rituals around taking care of precious original artworks and wearing white gloves and this kind of thing. Instead, you basically have uh, a number of collections at your desktop. And that's something that's really uh, useful. It makes the research much more vibrant. And it means that you can make comparisons and links between things um, from one place. So that's something very practical about uh, Open Glam. But another thing about Open Glam is that it's an opportunity to, to share collections beyond the walls of the institution, which means that people who may not necessarily go inside a gallery or inside a museum have the opportunity to still find out what's there, but on their own terms. And maybe they find this through a Facebook link or in a WhatsApp group, or they see something on Pinterest that gets them curious. Um, so there are many ways in which people find this material, but I think the beauty is that people can find collections and make relationships with the collections on their own terms. In my own work, I think some of the challenges and barriers to, to open glam are to do with how information is described and stored in digital collections and the ways in which they relate to the originals. I spent some time working on colonial photography and colonial documents and artworks. And sometimes institutions that house these collections have very unbalanced information because of the nature of colonial record keeping that was biased towards often European colonizers, which means that what you have is essentially a kind of uh, lopsided uh, archival or collection that's weighted towards people who had power. Uh, and that means that often you would have photographs of people from different parts of the world with no names, um, incorrect uh, associations in terms of the community groups or the ethnic groups that they came from. Also a misunderstanding of context, what is really happening in this photograph. And so I think some of the challenges have been migrating an uh, imbalanced archive, an imbalanced collection and a set of imbalanced power relations into the digital domain. And so I've really been thinking about how do we advocate for an ethics of care that allows for us to work with these collections so that we can tell people what happened and embed that in the metadata so that this material flows around the internet in a more careful way. I think another challenge and barrier to open glam is really um, to do with this notion of openness. We think that if something is digitized and is available on the internet as we know it in usually in Western or Northern Europe or in the United States, that somehow that means that everybody has access to it. Of course, the internet is patchy depending on where it is. Even whole sways of the United States don't even have you know, fiber optic cabling, for example, for wireless. So I think we need to consider what um, openness online really means and who the audiences are. Are they mostly privileged audiences? Are they mostly people who have access to very expensive laptops and mobile phones? Or is this truly an open culture that can be accessed anywhere, anytime by all people around the world? So I think considering questions of ethics and representation and how do we talk about unfinished and challenging and difficult histories, and then also thinking about the question of what, what openness really means in a much broader context. Something someone told me about glam that I didn't know before was the fact that when certain materials come out of copyright, 
So the copyright has ended and it's available to be shared as open commons on, online. That institutions do have the possibility of reinstating copyright legislation so that they go back into a kind of enclosure. Um, that stops people from being able to use this material and work with the material in their own way. And this is something I hadn't really thought about before, because I thought about copyright as something that sort of like existed in the world. And once the copyright ended, whatever happens, somehow you, you can have access to this material. And so I thought the, the fact that institutions still have the possibility to keep um, putting blocks on access to material uh, is something that gave me pause to consider, again, questions of power and agency and the balancing of um, who has the right to decide. So this is something that um, someone told me in the context of GLAM that gave me pause to think. A personal message for people who are maybe a little bit not sure about entering into glam or opening up their collections, I would say that, you know, this is really an opportunity um, to allow people to also teach you about what you have. Um, I've been thinking a lot about how institutions kind of not just um, control uh, collections and artifacts, but also control the narrative, deciding about what gets told about the kinds of collections that they have. And so I think Open Glam offers an opportunity for many different voices and perspectives to speak about the collections, to give you them, to give them new contexts of meaning, and to really kind of revive this cultural heritage in ways that are much more equitable and open. Um, so I would say that see that as an opportunity to kind of reach beyond the institution and for the institution to learn about what they have, but also about themselves um, and to balance uh, the power dynamics um, that we have inherited from history. So I would encourage people to enter into this space with humility, uh, but also with a sense of curiosity about how others feel about the things that they have in their collections. <laughs>